You're watching Backyard Tech. The 80 Series Land Cruiser. As far as old mate's concerned, it's one of the best four-wheel drives Toyota have ever made. Two fuel systems available with it. But can you set one fuel system up the same as the other? It's Q&A and advice time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one. Can you set up a petrol 80 series the same way a diesel 80 series works? G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, it is 80 series time here at the Backyard Tech Channel for TGIF for a Friday morning, also Q&A and advice time as well, and this comes off the back of an email I got overnight. Now, we're talking about the 80 series, so before I get into this video, we all know I've got to do the formalities, because if I don't, we all know the pain I get into. So let's get the formalities out of the road first, then we'll get stuck into the Q&A and advice video. I am in no way, shape, or form a fully qualified mechanic. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you are doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. And don't say you haven't. Overnight, I got an email from, I assume, an American um, by the name of Tim. Uh, hi, is it possible to set up the gasoline fuel system on an 80 series the same as the diesel fuel system on an 80 series? The short answer is no. The long answer is yes with modifications. Now, I don't know what, I assume he's running a petrol motor. Just before we get into this, I've been belted by this. I haven't published the comments because I'm not willing to jeopardize the channel with some of the words that have been used. Um, for those that don't know, I'm an Australian. I live in Victoria, Australia. We don't call it gasoline. We call it petrol. All right? We don't call it gasoline or anything else. It's petrol. Okay? That's what I know it as. That's what I describe it as. Petrol and diesel. Okay? Now, my long-time American viewers and international viewers, you guys all know that. But for some reason, I get these people who arc up at me and say, Oh, it's not petrol, it's gasoline. I live in Australia. We call it petrol. Okay, so can you set up an 80 series petrol the same way you can set up a diesel? For the sake of argument here, I'm going to look at the two common engines in the 80 series. And specifically, I'm going to look at the GXL model only. You have the 4.2 litre direct injection turbo diesel. Or the 4.5 litre six cylinder petrol engine. So, how does the fuel system on the two work? Now, we've gone over this in the past, by the way. And people still don't look through the 80 series playlist. I think I'm going to have to promote the 80 series playlist soon. But anyway, so we're looking at a GXL Model 80 and we're looking at the two common engines in it. Okay, now let's look at the diesel first. Okay, 4.2 litre six cylinder direct injection turbo diesel, otherwise known as a 1HDT. Okay. Replaced, uh, it replaced the 12 HT, which is a 4 litre turbo diesel. Now, the fuel system on the diesel is very different to the petrol. You still have two tanks. But with the diesel, you can actually run the engine off the sub tank. If my memory's right, you can fill the main tank from the sub, but it will transfer. But you can actually run the motor off the sub tank. You have two independent fuel tanks with it. Okay? The petrol engine, or the petrol model, I should say, you still have two fuel tanks. 
total capacity of 140 litres, but they're not independent of each other. Okay? They are not independent. If you actually drop the tanks, you'll note that there is a, a pipe running from the, main, from the sub to the main tank. Okay? And in the cab, there's a switch. We'll go and look at that shortly. Now, my sub tank's empty, by the way. So, with the petrol engine, okay, when you hit your sub tank button, you fill the main from the sub. But there are a few conditions to do with that, which we've gone over in the past as well. I'll go over them again. Number one, with the petrol engine, okay, it will only fill the sub tank, uh, the main tank, I'm sorry, to two thirds full. So just under three quarters of a tank. So for example, if you have 45 litres left in your fuel tank out of 90 litres, you're only going to come up to about 60 something, 70 something litres, two thirds full. This is assuming you've got the factory fuel system. However, if you have 50 litres in your sub tank, so your sub tank's full, okay, and you've got your low fuel light on, so you've got about 15, 20 litres in the, in the tank, and you hit your sub tank, you'll put 50 litres in the tank, 70 litres. Okay? Give or take. Now, if you want to rework the fuel system for the petrol motor, that's a lot of stuff in around. Okay, the EMS system and the fuel system on the petrol is not designed to run two independent fuel systems. You would have to do some modifications, but at the same time, you could probably mod the fuel system to either pump or run from the second tank or fill the primary tank. Okay, so you've got a total fuel capacity on the 80 petrol of 140 litres. That's 90 main, 50 sub. Now, if you've decided to do a long range fuel tank, that then gets very different. I can't answer that. I don't have a long range fuel tank. All right. The diesel works a little bit differently. Now, if my memory's right about this, you can either run from the sub or fill the main. Okay, so either transfer or run. I think it's a two-stage switch for memory. So, by definition, no. And the other thing you've got to remember too about the sub tank is the fuel pump is not designed to run a long time. It's a transfer pump. It's not actually a heavy lift pump it's a transfer pump now transferring from one to the, t the other is a slow process don't get me wrong it does take a while but you can run the sub tank while you're driving so you're cruising up the highway at 100 110 k's an hour so 60 65 ish miles an hour if i'm right you can transfer on the fly with the diesel i believe you can switch on the fly as well so what we're going to do we're going to head out to my 80 series and go over the fuel system again and hopefully that'll put it straight now for just let me reiterate it for those that aren't regular viewers of the backyard tech channel or anything like that i'm an aussie okay so i use australian terminology for everything I want to reiterate that because I get a lot of people abusing me for not pronouncing or spelling things properly. And the, the, the language I get, I'm not publishing because it's not worth me risking the channel. Okay? So, I pronounce things the Aussie way. Now, if that doesn't match the way it's pronounced elsewhere, stiff. All right? Let's, uh, let's head out to the 80 series and I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
Holy moly, it's a bit of a pea super out here this morning. I haven't been outside yet, but wow. Look at the fog. All right. So, we'll go over this again. As you can see, my fuel door got ripped off. So you have your fuel filler and your butterfly valve from your main tank to your sub tank. So that's main. That's sub. All right. One's a little bit stiff at the moment, but so that's the same for the diesel as well. Okay, your main tank is there, your sub tanks underneath here, which we've seen before. I'm not going to get crawling under the car again. All right, so come into the cab. Okay, so uh, I need to start the motor so I can straighten up the steering wheel, I think. Yeah, I do. Whoa, I forgot I had the radio up. Okay, now let me turn the torch on so we can get a better look. Okay. Hang on, it's not sick. Turn that off. All right, so we have our fuel gauge. This is our main fuel gauge here. All right. This is our sub tank. It's not sitting in properly since I put the dashboard back in. So there's our sub tank. Now with the diesel, this is a two-stage switch. One way fills the main from the sub. The other way runs the engine off the sub. Here's your sub tank. And as you can see, mine's empty, all right? Now, in the petrol system, when you hit that, as I've mentioned before, it will transfer from this to the main, but you will only get to two thirds full, which is just under half, just under the top quarter of a tank. Now, being 90 liters, you have 90, 45, and about 22, I've got about 35 litres left in my fuel tank. All right. Now, while I'm driving, I can transfer from here. But if my main tank is empty, I cannot start the motor until I've transferred. All right. Now, how would you go about setting it up that you could run the engine off that sub tank? Well, first off, you're going to have to put a better pump in the sub tank. Okay, because the pump in the sub tank is not a long running pump. It's not designed from that. It's not a high pressure output pump. So that's your first problem. Your second problem would be is telling the ECU to actually run off this tank. So you'd have to re-plumb the fuel system, especially if you want to run it in a similar way to what you run the diesel as. Okay, I know that sounds complicated, but there's no really easy way of actually doing it. Now, judging by the tone of the email, he wanted to know whether or not it was actually an easy setup. It's not. You can do it, but there's really no advantage to it. The reason I say there's really no advantage is because you're still only going to have 140 litres of petrol. However, one upside to running two fuel systems in it would be instead of having to wait to transfer from the sub to the main, would be that if you run out in your main, you could just straight switch to the sub tank. But like I said, you'd have to rework the ECU and you'd want to change the, the pump in the sub tank to run for an elongated period of time because it's only a low pressure pump. It's basically a fuel transfer pump rather than an actual EFI pump. All right. So hopefully that explains it. It's probably the best way I can put it. Nevertheless, though, as I said, to set up the petrol version as the diesel, the short answer is no, but the long answer is yes, but it would cost money. And look, there's no real advantage. You're still going to get 140 litres of petrol. The only upside is that if you were to set it up independent, 
you won't have to wait for the transfer. Now, to give you an idea, um, which I forgot to explain while I was out there, I'll give you an example before we finish up. I drive from, I fill the car up, all right? So I drive from here to Bendigo. And let's say petrol's cheap, it's down at a dreamy $1.10 a litre. <laughs> okay. So I put in, I fill this main tank up, and then I drop 25, 30 bucks into the sub. So it'll be about 20, somewhere around 18 to 23, 24 litres. Say for argument's sake, half the sub tank. So I drop 25 litres into the sub tank. Okay. I drive from here, Leopold, up to Bendigo. About 235 kilometres. 237-ish, maybe. Round figure, make it 235 just for argument's sake. So from here at home to the other half's parents, 235 k's going the way I normally go. Okay. Cars freshly serviced. So I will get to Bendigo with more than half a tank left in the main tank. So I may have used, I may have got the economy down to 17 litres by 100 k. So I've used, for argument's sake, 40 litres, 35 litres, all right, from 90. So I still have... 65 litres in the tank. I've got 25 litres in the sub. And we're up there for a few days. So I decide I'm going to transfer fuel from the sub to the main. I'm only going to go to about 70 litres. So I'm only going to add maybe 5 or 10 litres to the main tank. Okay, the petrol version will only go to two thirds full. I do not know how to make it do any more than two thirds full. Okay, so slightly less than three quarters of a tank. All right, fractions is not my strong point. Maths isn't my strong point, but that's sort of how it works in a KIWS scenario. So, short answer no, long answer. Yes, only if you're going to spend money and you'd have to modify the fuel system and the ECU at the same time, plus put in a different pump in the in the sub tank. So hopefully that answers your question. Stick around. We'll see what else crops up throughout the day. Have a good one all. Cheers.